floor for any comments. Thank you. Thanks very much, Rob. Um, so I'm going to facilitate the Q&A. We're just going to take turns. We've got um, seven people that have joined us remotely. So we'll start with uh, individuals that are in the room, and then we'll just go back and forth. If you wouldn't mind coming to the microphones on, the, on your right, um, just so that everybody can hear your question or comment. Thank you, sir. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, actually, he turned it on for you. Okay. Okay. So, my name is Rick David, and I live right at the corner of Greenfield and Ashgrove. That's uh, supposed to be a three way stop sign there, but not too many people realize what it is. Um, there's a, I would say there's a very high percentage of people that don't stop, sometimes do a rolling stop. Um, anyway, those that do stop, there's also a high percentage of them that burn rubber away from the stop sign and roar down Greenfield. Some of them wheel around the corner and tear off on Ashgrove. There's a ridiculous amount of noise there. I can tell you there's one guy that drives a white Audi and he just intentionally makes noise as far as I can see in the middle of the night too. But anyway, I, I, I think in general, I, I really like the plan, but I really would like to see something that addresses noise levels in the, in the area. And I thank you for listening. Rick, uh, with respect to the, the misbehavior of drivers, um, it is a it largely as a police responsibility that the noisy mufflers or Highway Traffic Act violations, any sort of vehicle modification. Um, I was told that they do have a new a person in charge of their traffic department who's quite eager to to um, look after things like this. So if you want to get the plate number and the uh, make of the car, just email me and I'll pass it on, okay? Okay, um, I'm going to ask the folks that have joined us virtually to just use the uh, raise hand icon. It's uh, at the bottom of your screen. And if you'd like to make a comment or ask a question, by all means. Okay, great. Susan, go ahead. Can you hear me? We can. Thank you, Susan. Great. That was an odd comment by Mr. McCreary. How are we supposed to get the plate number of these cars when they're speeding down at 100k on a 50 or 60 kilometer uh, space. Now I'm not talking about the last, what the last man was. I'm talking about Powerline Road. I've been complaining about it for years and I'm sure Mr. McCreary knows exactly who I am and what I'm talking about. I've got a lovely backyard and Oasis backyard and I'm terrified. Somebody's going to be jumping into that pool with their little white body with my grandkids in there. Anybody there? You're absolutely right, Susan. No question about it. I drive power line and um, on the rare occasions when I go slightly over, I have a line up behind me of folks wanting to get past me. And exactly. uh, you're absolutely right. I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, somebody went into the backyard at the front unit at 422 power line, um, drunk as a skunk one night. And uh, it's a good thing that happened at night and nobody was out or they would have been killed. You're absolutely right. Uh, City of Brantford doesn't really have much control over the traffic on power line. And, um, you know, you, you obviously can't uh, get the license plate numbers of the folks going by, but the gentleman that I addressed the remark to certainly can because he sees it uh, out the front window. So uh, not an odd comment, Susan, an accurate comment. And um, if, you know, as I said, if you want to get in touch with the uh, City of Brantford Police Department, they patrol that road. And uh, the board is responsible for providing uh, adequate and effective policing. And if you don't think that the enforcement of speed is adequate and effective, you should probably get in touch with them and um, and tell them you want to see improvements, okay? So that would be city police, not OPP? City police, that's correct. We we took that roadway in in the annexation going back a few years. So the policing of power line now, is a, it's a city road. Well, I've called them before about gunshots in the neighborhood and never heard anything back. Yeah, they, they're not big on calling you back. 
Um, but it doesn't doesn't mean they don't doesn't mean they don't do what you've asked them to do. Okay. Well, that's possible. But uh, yep. like I said in my note when I joined today, I said uh, we walk our dogs along Ashgrove a lot, and we don't see a lot of problems there. But maybe we're not there at the right time. We don't live there. We're just there for maybe a ten minute walk down the street. And I don't see problems, but Powerline Road is an absolute nightmare. Today, I probably had, oh, golly, uh, within a half an hour, I had everybody driving about 100K. And some of them were transport trucks, which are usually pretty good. But the little white car that fellow's talking about, I don't know if it's the same one, but it's the noisiest car I've ever heard. And he shifts to gears four gifts then he downshifts then he takes off again and i don't know how he can't be caught he's so obvious anyway thank you for listening thank you susan yes thank you susan um is there anybody else in the chamber here yes ma'am My name is Glenda Batiste. I live on Ashgrove. And my concern is for this uh, stop sign that was placed just outside the park. Yeah. So, sorry, that's my phone. On Ashgrove, um, but near to the school. West. I stay and look through my window and see all the vehicles going by. And those who just don't care to stop, they might slow down, but they never stop. And the other thing I'm concerned about is when I'm coming down on Memorial and making a right turn onto Ashgrove, it's very hard. And I live on Ashgrove and it's very hard for me to see the street in the night coming down to make the right, this is left, to make a left turn onto Ashgrove coming from Powerline Road. It's very difficult to see Ashgrove to get on that street. Those are my is it reasons. because of poor street lighting or what is, what is the yes, difficulty? I would, I would think it's the street lighting. You see, it's just, it's too dark. Yes. Okay. We can look at the lighting levels there. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your comment. Thanks for coming. I'm going to shift back to online. If there's any of the participants wanted to make a comment or uh, ask a question. We uh, One of the uh, online did put a question in the chat, so I'm just going to read it. Um, are you proposing reducing the speed on Ashgrove to be 30? I do feel this sort of adds a nuisance to those of us that do follow the speed limit of 40, those who speed will speed regardless of the, the limit. Uh, regarding the gunshot noises, it is cars with loud mufflers that are backfiring. It's to the point these loud cars, um, the, the cars are so loud that it's gotten to a point where they don't even take their dogs out at night. So in response to the speed limit question, yes, the, uh, the area, the whole neighborhood, the speed limit would be reduced to 40 kilometers an hour and the school zone on Ashgrove would be reduced to 30 as well as the existing 40 um, school zone on Cedarland beside the school would also be reduced to 30. So just to the comment about whether or not that's going to be influential on people who are speeding, um, I guess a part and parcel with that will be education about the change and additional enforcement. Correct. Yeah. And we have uh, speed recording devices that we can discreetly record speed. So we've got all, all the uh, before speed data. So if these traffic calming and speed limit reductions are implemented, we can do the speed studies in the same locations and uh, do a comparator and see if uh, what the before and after speed studies are. And the traffic calming will definitely reduce the speed limits in the school zone. And since we're proposing the 
raised crosswalks in the school zones, we'll, we'll definitely see a speed reduction in the school zone. Email to read. Sure. So we, we've been getting messages as well by email today. So I've got one from Bill on Applewood Drive. <clears throat> I can't attend the meeting. Can you please bring up the issue of cars, trucks, and both type of buses speeding up and down my street all day? I've called City Hall a few times about it, and so far they've not posted a speed limit sign, at least as per my request. A lot of school kids live on my street and several times um, have almost been hit as well as my own grandkids playing at my house on the weekends. Please help. The street was Applewood, Councilor McCurry. Just checking to see if we have a speed study. Um, yeah, so we did do a speed study on Applewood and the 85th percentile speed was 51 kilometers an hour. So for a posted speed limit of 50, the that's pretty good. That's typically uh, the 85th percentile on a 50 kilometer hour local road quite often is in the 53, 54 range. Um, so 51 is pretty good when you compare it to other local roads in the city. Um, we can certainly do another speed study and, and get an idea of what the speeds are, but being in the neighborhood, um, well, actually that's outside of our, the, the neighborhood that we're looking at, but, uh, as we do other neighborhood reviews, we'll be expanding the area speed limits and 30 kilometer hour school zones. So that can certainly be another neighborhood that we look at in the future. Uh, Maria, one more from Neil, mm -hmm. who says he can't be here, but he supports measures to make traffic safer, including traffic calming and bicycle lanes. Hey, was there anybody else in the room that wanted to make any comments? Great, thank you. Don? Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you for this evening, for the presentation. Uh, glad to be here. I did miss the September one, uh, so I didn't uh, hear all the concerns that were raised. Um, I live on Ash Grove as well. I'll kind of echo the comment the last uh, individual made. Um, I do feel sometimes this, the buses seem to be the biggest problem on Ashgrove. Uh, they have like big tanks just roaring down the street sometimes. Um, so I'd like to maybe if that could be uh, looked into as well. Um, I do appreciate that they uh, look into a raised walkway across from the school. I think that's a good idea. Um, I also want to point out um, coming out of Cedarland onto Ashgrove when the cars are parked on the south side of the road. It uh, can be very challenging coming out and turning. That's where I go, turning uh, right onto Ashgrove. Like you got to get right out there to see past all the car parked cars. Um, it's a bit of a, a blind spot there. Um, okay, so I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not sure if there's a corner parking restriction sign there, but uh, we can certainly look at putting one there just to maintain the sight lines there. Sure, we'll look into it. Thank you. Okay, yeah, again, thank you. My name's Dean Main. I live on Ashgrove Avenue, but I have a question uh, concerning another street. It's Forsyth. There was traffic bumps there. I think it was an experiment done before the winter time, and they were removed, obviously, for snow removal, I think. Were, were they about to, are, are they going to be replaced, or is it just an experiment to see if seems to me they were quite effective. They were indeed. Um, it, it was a pilot project. So we installed them in the spring and removed them in November with the intention of, uh, again, like you said, because of the snow, they were rubber, so they were temporary. Um, but it was kind of an approach to get a feel for them and see if there was neighborhood support for doing a permanent installation. So in May, May 25th, staff have a report going to the Vision Zero Road Safety Committee recommending that permanent asphalt speed cushions be installed at the same four locations that the mm -hmm. temporary ones were installed. I, I understand you can't have those on asphalt because of the buses. I mean, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. It would uh, freak the people out on the, well, not to mention the damage it'd do to a bus. You ever gone over a speed bump and you don't realize it's there? It's quite a shock. 
Well, it's those transit operators are smart. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. the, the reason the gaps are in those speed cushions is to reduce the, uh, the, the slowdown that emergency services have to uh, slow down when they're going yeah. over them. But fire trucks have roughly the same wheelbase as a transit bus. Yeah. So they can kind of go in those gaps too. And it doesn't slow down transit too much. And uh, so being on a transit road isn't a reason to not do them. Right. And uh, like what I presented tonight was just a suggestion. I mean, it's not the la the end of the world. We can always expand that and look at doing additional sets of speed cushions if we see a positive change in the, the middle section of Ashgrove. But like if we need to do a set of speed cushions over towards Ivanhoe and over towards Greenfield, we can always add them in the future if we get the support. Well, Ivanhoe is definitely a challenge because they're parking on both sides. But it's, if anything, it slows people down to make them pay attention. But it's also a, like, an, like a, what do you call it in, in car racing? A chicane. A chicane, yep. Yeah. I don't know why that came up. <laughs> no, that's that's exactly what it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, because you one vehicle has to wait for the yeah. other, and then you weave around. And, and on street parking is an yeah. effective traffic calming measure. Well, my my former neighbor used to complain that people when you when you park on the street, you got to be six feet away from the end of a laneway, so she he or she could turn in. And if, if people could sort of understand, you know, if you're going to park on the street, give the people who who have a driveway there just a bit of, enough for a turning radius yeah. to get into their other than that. The no, city uh, bylaw is one meter. Yeah. So yeah. that's more like three feet from a three driveway. Feet. Yeah. Six feet seems better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. All, you. all these suggestions are very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Susan would like another speaking opportunity. So go ahead, Susan. Hi. Um, I'm listening to a couple of the things other people were saying. Applewood had some kind of a speed study on it. That's correct. Yep. Is that not possible for Powerline Road? Yep, we, we've done them. Um, and I can just turn to Christian here and we'll, I, I, I can, I'm, I can guarantee, I can confirm that speeding is a problem on Powerline Road. It's, it's an arterial road and you tend to see higher speeds on arterial roads. And uh, we're just looking it up here. The, so the operating right. speed was in the 60s, by the looks of it. Oh, brother. Yeah, so <laughs> it, definitely, it, it is definitely hot. Well, sorry. No, 73 was the 85th percentile speed. So 85th percentile speed is what 85% of the vehicles are traveling at or below. So for a posted speed limit of 60, that is considered high. And when we do speed studies and we get results like that, we reach out to the Brantford Police Service and ask for enforcement. And have you done that in this case? We have, and we are also looking at um, our road improvements on Powerline Road to the uh, east side of Wayne Gretzky Parkway. We've got a consultant right now working on uh, a safety review. And one of the concerns that council had on Powerline Road was speeding. There was a few collisions that had occurred at the intersection of Brantwood Park and Powerline. So they are looking at ways of improving that intersection and also reducing the speed limits. Um, roundabouts have been talked about on Powerline Road. And uh, I'd love to see roundabouts on every entry road coming into the city because it would act as uh, a way of slowing down the traffic. Because right now, when you're coming in from the county on every street, you know, whether it's Erie Avenue or Shellard Lane, there's there's nothing to really slow people down until they get to the first traffic signal or um, and, and unfortunately, like Powerline Road, when you're coming in from the east, the, the first thing that you have to stop at is the traffic signal at Wayne Gretzky Parkway. So we need to look at uh, ways to slow them down long before that. Right. Between Park Road and, and Wayne Gretzky, that's where, well, I live, but you guys spent a lot of money on um, the walkways through there. We had one of these kind of meetings many years ago about what to do about the gully or the valley did you put one in there where well, you weren't able to but all those lovely walkways you've got nobody walks on them because the traffic is too fast it's too loud it's it's a nightmare power line road is a nightmare and 
uh, what was the other thing I was going to ask them? I... You can't put speed bumps. In oh, the speed bumps. Yeah. Um, or well, the other fella called them cushions on Forsyth. Is that not possible for uh, Powerline Road? No, um, the city has a traffic calming policy and arterial roads are not uh, appropriate for physical traffic calming measures. Arterial roads are designed to move high volumes of traffic from one side of the city to the other. And uh, we it's it's it wouldn't be appropriate. There's it's higher speeds and uh, traffic calming is more appropriate in you know residential neighborhoods by schools and other pedestrian generators to. Uh, to encourage speed, slower speeds in, in those residential neighborhoods. Well, what say you to the lovely walkway you made there that nobody can use or nobody does use? I, I've seen lots of people using it. I, I'm sorry. I when I we like I've been out on Powerline Road a lot lately with this uh, consultant doing the studies, and I see people biking and walking dogs along all the time. So I guess it's just a preference. But uh, I, you know, as the city expands to the north, there's going to be lots of road improvements made to Powerline Road. And as I'd mentioned in my presentation, we are doing an environmental assessment. We will be looking at traffic improvements along Powerline Road. Um, I recall I'm council actually providing a direction to council to, or sorry, to staff to look at doing roundabouts at uh, every intersection on Powerline Road. Obviously, we wouldn't do that on every intersection, but um, there is opportunity for improvements and they will be look at, looked at as we do this environmental assessment. Well, the problem is there are no intersections between Park Road and Wayne Gretzky. There's streets you can turn into, but only on one side. So I don't think a roundabout would be appropriate mm -hmm. for there not feasible at all. And I live outside uh, oh, a lot of the year uh, and I see nobody, the occasional bike, the occasional one person walking, but never anybody with dogs. I would love to walk my dogs down there. It's my opinion because I live 24 seven. I've been here 42 years and that was a country road when I moved here. The biggest traffic we had was when Smokey and the Bandit appeared at the Breeze's drive-in and there was cars backed up all along that road and I couldn't believe the sight of it. It's actually funny when you think of it today but that's what happened back in eh, probably somewhere in the 80s. Okay, I, I mean, all your concerns are valid and uh, like I said, our capital planning group is going to be looking at Powerline Road, so I will relay all your concerns to them so they can uh, be considered as part of the uh, environmental assessment for the road improvements. Okay, thank you, Susan. Um, we're going to go to a comment now on uh, in the chat. Um, another issue is parents illegally parking on all sides of the road on Cedarland before and after school. Um, they also block driveways. Okay, thank you for that comment. It's unfortunately a common com complaint we get at most schools in the city. And parking enforcement does have uh, an enforcement that goes around to all the schools, but uh, obviously they can't be at every school every day, but I will uh, forward your concern on to parking enforcement so they're aware of it and they can send someone out and include the uh, Cedarland school as part of their rotation if it isn't already. Thanks, Rob. Um, any other questions or comments from uh, folks here in person? Speak now, forever hold your peace. <laughs> okay, I don't see any other questions or, or comments in the chat um, and no raised hands. Um, so I, I think we'll uh, conclude the meeting now. Anything else you wanted to say, Councillor? Uh, absolutely not. Thank you very much for coming again. <laughs> um, and um, maybe you can have a quick peek at the rest of the main floor of the building before you go to see how well we spent your tax dollars. And what a nice job we did. And uh, again, uh, regrets from Greg, who couldn't be here tonight. He's holding down the fort at the other meeting. 
and uh, we'll be around for a few minutes. So, sorry for the, the formal setup that we've got here, but because we do it by Zoom, we have to sit up here and you have to sit out there so the microphones and the cameras work. Uh, ordinarily, we'd, we'd all be at the same level. Um, so we'll be around for a few minutes, but we will adjourn now. That's the end of the meeting and we'll be uh, turning the recording off. And uh, uh, thanks again for coming. Yes, thanks. And if uh, any of your neighbors want to hear the presentation, um, it will be on the city's YouTube channel. Um, so it, it was streamed live and it will be there for anybody who wants to watch it um, tonight or tomorrow or after that. Thanks for coming. Thank you.